Hi, my name is Drew Land. Welcome to my vlog, Equipping You for a Meaningful Life. We have been in the middle of a money series. If you haven't seen the other episodes, I encourage you, go back, watch some of those episodes, and please subscribe below and put on the notification bell so you don't miss any of the great Christian content we're bringing you every single week. Today, I've got with me a fantastic couple from my church, and they have been putting some of the principles from the money verse into practice. And I thought it would be great to interview them so that you can have kind of a real life example stories of how people do it in practical ways. So let me start by first introducing them, or you introduce yourselves, tell us your names and a little bit about yourselves. Thank you for having us today. Um, my name is Letugutwila Kumede. I'm married to this lovely lady next to me. My name is Kaliswa Kumede, and I've been married to Letu for six years. We have three children, and a fourth one on the way. Fourth on the way, just to insert real quick, I know they've just come from a scan at the hospital, so you saw the baby's heartbeat and everything. And everything's great, thumbs up. Everything's yeah. great. Oh, wonderful, you're excited, you're ready to have four kids. <laughs> you need you need these money principles more than ever now. Yes, Trust me, I've got yes. five kids. I know what I'm talking about. Okay, well, tell us just tell us a little bit about what you've learned and what you've what you've been doing with that money from these principles. Well, one of the principles that we have applied is actually an income centric budget. Income centric. So what that means is that the income is right at the top of the budget. So we're looking at how much money is coming in first and assessing that before we start spending. Did you not used to do that? You used to just kind of spend without thinking about the income coming in? We used to manage expenses. Okay, you manage right. expenses right. instead right. of income. An income, yes. Wow, that's a great shift. That's very good. Okay, so then, then tell us a bit more. What do you do? So um, when the money comes in, obviously, we just uh, then start looking at, uh, at the top by uh, giving some away. Okay. Saving some and then expanding as we need. Great. We teach that in the money verse, what you want to do, you look at your income, you make the money, bring it in. Then you're going to give some away. You're then going to save and then you're going to start spending. In that order, that's how you win with money. So tell me, so you give it away. So what, where do you give it to? <laughs> <laughs> well, we tithe at our church. Okay, good. We, we're good also thing. teaching good children thing. to also uh, give some charity at school as well. So we Brilliant. teach them these, these principles. Brilliant. Yeah, so we've been able to tithe, which is something we couldn't do before because we used to think, oh, there just isn't enough money to, to do so. So we prioritized tithing and we prioritized saving money as well. And with the budget, we were able to look at, once it's down, uh, we were able to see we really don't need this. This is wasting our money. This we need. So we cut it down to what we really need. Yeah. So we were able to use some of that extra money then to tie, to save ourselves, and um, to also get rid of some of our debts, which we've been able to do pretty well in the last couple of years. Wow, that is brilliant. Let me just insert real quick. This is so important. The budget, they're talking about using a budget. When my wife and I started using a budget, we increased our income by 15%. That's what they're saying. When they started budgeting and thinking about the income and where it can go and where it should go, instead of just spending without a plan, it was then at that moment they were able to, to start giving more and to then to start saving because it starts to increase. Your money starts to increase. And that's really how it does work. Tell us a little bit about your spending habits. You were, you were telling me uh, some of the things that we discuss in the book you've actually implemented. Tell us how that's working out and what you've done. So one of the shifts that we, we were to with the budgets was that um, <clears throat> we would um, actually manage the expenses and have some money left over to, for any other business that we have around the household. Yeah. But what just start to happen is that we spend some of that money before and we finish it before the month ends. Okay. And we still need some things, some certain things in the house like uh, fruits, we buy those uh, fresh yeah. uh, and so on. So what we were able so to you, do... So you would just spend and then j that spending would just run out of... You just run out of money by the end of the month. Yeah. yeah. That is so common. I mean, if that happens to you, just write below how often that <laughs> happens to you. Comment. Uh, I think it's so true. All of us are struggling and to, to do that. And, and the saying goes like this. At, you often have more month. What is it? At the end of the money. More month at the end of the money instead yeah. of more money at the end of the month. So, so yeah. then what did you change? 
So what we changed within the budget, we'd actually put a line item for certain items that we want um, throughout the month. For instance, fruits, yep. um, fuel, we need fuel throughout yep. the month. Um, and we'll t take those out and put them in the in the envelope and leave them home. Yeah, your envelope system. The envelope system. Yeah. So you, you started doing the envelope system that you read about in the book. Yeah, so the envelope system we had, um, I remember with, I saw, I remember you had said bread and milk and we're like, we don't buy those daily, but we buy fruits and vegetables weekly, um, date nights, because we also acknowledge that keeping the relationship refresh is important. Um, also, Takeaway, um, we that once a week we buy takeaway on a Friday night. For those of you watching in America, oh. takeaway is to go. <laughs> That's food to go. Okay. Food to take go. Away. <laughs> Got it. Take away. Yeah. Yeah. So um, those things that, that we thought um, they were important to us, and we spend throughout the month. We put certain amount towards them, and we would draw the cash, put in the envelope, and if we, for example, let's say we spend. 200 rand a week on the vegetables and we overspend if the money's finished then the money's finished and then you just don't buy vegetables then we just don't buy for, for that one week or so it helped us stay disciplined and it helped us stay within budgets okay so let me just ask you so so just so if you're not understanding maybe you haven't read about the envelope system it is you withdraw the money so they budget and they know how much they want to go towards food fuel and it sounds like you've even categorized the food a little bit where it's vegetables and meat and you've actually broken that down a little bit. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So then they say, okay, that's, we're going to spend 200 Rand on vegetables. They withdraw that money from the bank. They put 200 Rand in an envelope. That's for vegetables. When that 200 Rand runs out, they don't buy it again. Yep. And then the same for fuel and the same. I mean, you must have to really get, get wise around your fuel as well. But if you start seeing it start to diminish throughout the month, what do you do? Well, we I think we, we I think we gave it about a couple of months to settle in, maybe two or three months. So I know how well my car runs and I know what a full tank is okay. on my car. So I can estimate say I need three tanks for the car and I'll say a full three full tanks is this much and I'll put it away. But if we because now we have this kind of system we actually do end up having even extra money in our bank accounts wow. so that if we have to take an unplanned trip somewhere, wow. then at least we still have something to fall back on. Whereas That's before, brilliant. we didn't really have a fallback plan, yeah. nothing to catch us at all. Wow. Can I also just mention around the envelope system, something that's really helped us, and we, we use the envelope system still, not for everything, but for a lot of the everyday expenses that we have. And what we've done is we've taken, we've, We'll have, let's say, a whole month of fuel, and we'll break it down into four weeks. So we'll have an envelope that says this is this week, this week, this week. So we break it down into even smaller increments. So we know if this week, so we're not running out at the end of the month, but we'll run out and we have to just suffer through whatever, Saturday and Sunday. And we know we have to really make some good calls if we're going to drive Saturday and Sunday. And we do that with food as well. So we have... A budget for our shopping. We don't break it down as much as you do in terms of veg. We'll have a we'll have a, a certain amount for food, and then but we separate it into four weeks. This amount of this first week, and so that way, if it starts to run out, we only starve for a day <laughs> instead of at the end of the month starving for a week because you're all out of money. Yeah. So that's one thing that we found helpful. Any things we need to wrap up now? But any any last kind of comments or thoughts that you might want to contribute? Yeah, so what I would say is that uh, definitely apply the principles and be disciplined at, at them. We're certainly not perfect, but I think uh, with the principles, we are on our way uh, to actually be better than we were before. Fantastic. Yeah, definitely. I think um, we have uh, gone through unnecessary debts. We call them necessary debts now, like your insurance, your car, your house. Mm -hmm. um, and we've also been able to make some uh, investment purchases. We recently bought a property that we are going wow. to lease out. Um, and that's all been possible um, because we applied the, the principles and we have been disciplined towards them. And definitely we'd like to make more changes, um, but it's really working out for us. Wonderful. Well, thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe below so you can hear a lot more of stuff to come your way. 
And uh, we want to say thank you to our guests. Thanks for being here. So appreciate your honesty. And, and I thank you for putting these principles into practice. I tell you, when you write a book like The Money Verse, you think, is anybody going to read this thing? Is anybody going to actually do it? Because you know that it works. You just want them to know it works. And thank you for proving that it works. It works. If you want to know more, go to drewland.org. You can buy the book there. You can also get a Kindle version of it so you can find out. There's also printables, a budget, and all sorts of stuff that you can print out and start using yourself. Find out what's happening. Subscribe to us on Facebook, Instagram, and we'll see you at the next vlog. Thanks so much.